What's up peeps, it's TV HD and I to welcome you to a brand new video. Now, as you know on my channel, I do tutorials every now and then, but this is kind of like a tutorial slash uh, discussion in a sense where I kind of want to talk about the impact of audio quality uh, in videos all across YouTube and its significance and importance uh, that I think is widely ignored, not across the uh, YouTube community in terms of people who um, already are YouTubers, already have uh, as their career and stuff, and they're making daily videos and stuff. I mean, the people who are new to YouTube and recently joining, wanting uh, to have this this life of playing games for a living, and they're coming into YouTube thinking, okay, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you say YouTube? Videos. So what they want is they want to get the best videos out, but you never hear the word audio, really. When you first YouTube, even I never really thought audio was a big deal, as I thought as long as you can hear me, that's what matters. But it really makes your videos sound a lot more professional, uh, and it really is is it's just psychologically much more appealing to the viewer when your videos have a lot better sound. And I'm going to show you what I mean by this uh, ASAP. Uh, I wanted to show you a few different uh, sound examples of how and something may affect something else. So, for first, I'm going to be doing, uh, I'm going to use an Audacity here, which is what I use to record my audio, but I'm not doing it now because uh, I'm using Audacity for this tutorial, so I'm using something else to record my audio. So, I'll be using this to uh, use examples for my kind of points here. Uh, and the first thing is clearly microphones. Now, I'm using the Kaji XL2200, which is a condenser microphone that I got for free, and it's worth £60. You need that hands down, and what microphone you have really does depend on uh, how it sounds, and also uh, how you go about using that microphone, because there's some microphones, like the one I'm using now, that, that are not compatible with the computer alone and need external support. So I've got, I've talked about it many times before, I've got like a mini audio interface that converts the power into a, a USB and allows me to use it. And that's what most YouTubers use now. So they'll get themselves a, a condenser microphone uh, or an XLR connector cable, which are higher end microphones that have much better sound quality. The one I'm using now, I said it's about £60. So it, in terms of XLR microphones, this is quite cheap. They go from £100 up to uh, £800 max. I mean, they really go really high up in terms of price the market is huge on these types of things because there's very little demand for this stuff and also the mechanics and stuff are quite expensive and you want to get the nice stuff you're gonna have to pay big money so this one i got for free luckily uh and i'm using it now and i don't think i'm gonna be upgrading anytime soon um so microphone is a massive massive deal uh i heavily advise you go and look at the blue snowball which is usually the starter for i think pretty much all youtubers they usually go for the blue snowball and uh, go and check that one out uh, because that's actually uh, a very good microphone for very cheap, and it's a USB microphone, which means you don't need an audio interface or external support. All you got to do is get the microphone, plug it in your P PC with a USB, and it will work. Easy and simple. Uh, there's other ones that also have amazing quality and still are a USB. Uh, and that's the Audio Technica AT2020, very popular in the YouTube community as well. It's uh, a, it's like a condenser microphone, but USB. So it's made for those who really uh, don't understand or have any sort of length and knowledge on audio and how to work uh, stuff like this. So if you just want to plug and play microphone, the Audio Technica AT2020 is very good as well for that. And uh, I think it's worth about 120 or 100 pounds. Again, it will be a lot of money. Uh, so if you want to go and go on there, I'll leave links to everything I talk about in the description, of course. Um, but if you are looking for a condenser microphone, then you will need, uh, well, I say condenser, but an XLR microphone, basically. Anything that has a connection that or, or requires more power. Uh, if you want one of them, then uh, I'll be leaving a uh, icicle, blue icicle. I know I said blue a lot, but they're very helpful in terms of newcomers into certain or into audio and stuff like that. They're very they focus on that area, I think, uh, a lot more. So uh, go and uh, I'll leave the icicle in the description, which is a simple plug and play. Uh, I say plug and play a lot, but it's a, a converter, it's an audio interface that will convert any sort of powerful microphone, and it has phantom power, which means it supports pretty much every microphone available uh, and puts it into your computer for you and allows it to work. So I'll leave the description that down below. Now, the importance of a microphone. You could just use your PC's microphone, right? Well, no, because you're going to get some real fuzziness, you know, in the background and 
uh, and it's going to be very hard to pick up your voice uh, and because it's not a professionally produced microphone. It's going to be cheap and it's just not going to do the job well. And it might work, fine. You could also try and use your camera's microphone, but it's pretty much the same. Um, I think the iPhone's camera, uh, the iPhone, because I know the iPhone is probably the most used phone. The camera's uh, microphone is pretty good if you go up close. But if you go anywhere of, uh, let's say, a foot away from it, it sounds pretty bad when you're in a, a noisy environment or any sort of environment. It doesn't sound too professional. So, again, you probably need a microphone. And I think that's the most important thing. So they range quite a bit. And also, another thing when making videos is your distance from the microphone. As I said a second ago, uh, distance is really important depending on what microphone you have. So uh, I'm pretty much right in front of my microphone now. And speaking, I have my gain turned down. Not a lot. And uh, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure if you know what gain is, but gain is basically the volume. I have the volume turned down for my input. And I can speak at a pretty loud voice quite close to this microphone and not be peaking, uh, which is basically going over uh, the, the limit that it should be and, not, and sounding horrible. So I'm not peaking and I'm, I'm speaking quite loud into the microphone that's quite in front of me. And the reason I do that is because the closer you are to, micro to the microphone, the easier it is for it to pick up your voice and get some really good depth on your voice. So if you're a bit distance away, I'm going to prove now. I'm going to move away. So as you can see here, I've moved away and... I'm a lot quieter because I've moved away from the microphone and it's it's just it's you could there's a lot more going on uh, around me so it's a lot harder to pick up my voice and it sounds less professional and I think that's really important now for you to decide where you should be in your, your position and stuff because if you, if, you if you don't have something that can bring the microphone close to your face and you've got you have your microphone some distance away then I advise you turn up your microphone's audio gain uh, which you can do manually in Audacity here. Uh, I think it's here. This is where you control the recording volume. You can turn it down and up. Um, and you can test it here. So I'm speaking right now. I'm hovering around 6 and 3, which is, if I shout, it might peak. But at normal talking levels, it's quite nice. So I have that there. So I might turn it down a little bit. Turn that down. Hello? 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 That sounds... <laughs> Hi! Hi! It down hi okay there we go so at peaking it's at six usually keep it around six so turn it down like that or if you have something like an audio interface uh you can actually turn it up manually i mean no not what i said manually a second ago but i mean physically like right in front of you so i'm going to turn up my microphone's audio now i'm going to turn down my voice because if i shout into this it's going to really peak and it's turning it up now hello so i've got to speak really quiet here and what that allows me to do is to go certain distance away from the microphone and still have a decent audio level although the quality is not as good I'm actually quite far away from the microphone now I'm about a foot away from it and still I'm peaking on some level so it's quite nice so if you ha can't put the microphone in your face you can still have it somewhere on your desk but just turn up the gain although you will drop in sound quality it still is a thing you need to do so let me go and turn that down uh, speak speak Hello, as you can see, I'm testing again, turning up my microphone to fit my voice into the microphone. Okay, so here we are. And uh, yeah, so that's another thing. Let's turn this off. It's just going to get annoying seeing it. Okay, so uh, distance is also an important uh, manner. Now, that's not the only thing. I know I've been rambling on for about 10 minutes talking about this stuff, and I've probably bored you to death, you know, talking about all this crap that you really don't want to listen, but it's really important. And I feel like if you want the best audio quality, you really need to take all these things into consideration. So, uh, now, it's also just more to just having a microphone speaking and putting it up. Now, there's a lot of people who just get a microphone, record, their audio sounds good, it's fine, upload it, nice. But if you want the best, I mean the best of what you have, you need to really have some uh, post-production to this audio, to this voice. You need some post-production. And I'm going to demonstrate what it does and how it impacts stuff uh, in terms of this. So I'm going to quickly grab my, uh, my iPad here and I'm going to play a, a video in the background. Not too loud, but enough for it to be picked up and uh, show you. I'm going to just record some audio and I'm going to do some post-production and see how I can make it better with this issue. So I've got it here. Let's. OK, so it's quite quiet. But it's something that will be picked up. So let's say you're uh, is playing right now in the background. Let's say 
your cousin or your sister or your brother is in the room, across the room, watching some video, and to you it's quite loud and your mic's picking it up. I'm going to show you how to deal with those little issues. Okay, so that's being picked up. Now, I'm going to record my voice. One, two, three, four. Peanut butter is best served fresh. Okay, so I have that. I'm going to turn this off now. Uh, I have that recorded, and that actually still sounds pretty, looks pretty good. Okay, so here's my voice, and this is the background noise, which uh, should be at flat. If it's not at flat, if you see it's quite fuzzy, that's probably because your microphone isn't that great, and it's not shutting out any noise. Uh, or, or there's something going on, like you've got a fan on or something. It will be picked up, and it will be shown here. Uh, I'm going to show you how to get rid of all that stuff. So let's have a listen. Let's see how it sounds. One, two, three. Four. Peanut butter is best served fresh. Now that still sounds pretty good. A lot of you be like, okay, that's good. Let's upload that. Let's get that done. But no, that is not good enough for me. If you can hear here, uh, there's still you can see, you can hear the video just slightly, and that's what you're gonna get if someone's doing something in the room. So let's have a look. It is not dead silent. I might turn up uh, this quickly. See how if you can. Let's play it. Okay, so I don't know if you heard that. If you had headphones on, turn it up. Uh, you probably might hear that, but it's background noise that I don't want. And if you're someone who watches YouTube with headphones, you will hear that. And that's something you don't want. You don't want someone hearing something else, and you want it to be the best it can be. Uh, so we're going to add some post-production to this. So what we're going to do is uh, first, we're going to copy. Let me uh, just cut it a little bit to give it some more freedom. I'm going to copy and paste it right next to each other. So I'm going to put it, paste it right here. Okay, so we have two different ones. Here is where I'm going to do post-production. Here is where I'm just going to leave it as normal on the left-hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my normal things that I do. So first off, this looks quite loud because I was quite close to the microphone. So uh, I will probably have to drop it, drop it, uh, de-amplify in a bit. But first, we go to equalization, and we're going to add some treble and bass boost. So treble boost and bass boost, it basically makes your, your voice sound a lot more crisp and clean. It boosts those frequencies that aren't really there, aren't really, well, they're not, they are there, but they're not as powerful as the, uh, the mid-range, because that's where voice is usually located. So you want to uh, boost the treble, boost the bass to give it an all-round frequency range, uh, which is quite nice. It makes it sound a lot more clean and crisp, as I said. So do that, especially the bass, and it will make it sound 10 times better. So let's let's see. Peanut butter is best served fresh. Peanut butter is best served fresh. Now, if you had headphones on, you could probably really hear that. Let's try and go again. Peanut butter is best served fresh. Peanut butter is best served fresh. So, as you can tell, it's a lot more crisp and clean, which is quite nice. So, uh, that's the first step. So, again, I'll take you through it. You go to equalization over here. Uh, go to select curve down here. And you go to treble boost, one of them, click OK, don't change anything, go back to it, same thing again, and do bass boost exactly here, just change it to bass, click OK, don't change anything, and it will work just fine. Now that's only the first step. Uh, another step will be uh, noise reduction, which uh, basically gets rid of that background noise that you want to get rid of over here. Peanut. So that picked up some some vocal there uh, that we don't want in our thing. And what you got to do is you got to go to effects, noise reduction. So effect over here, noise reduction, nice and easy. Go to get noise profile. What this does is it tells Audacity this highlight area. Make sure you do highlight it. Don't choose everything. Make sure you highlight the certain area that you want to uh, tell Audacity. This is what I want to get rid of. So you're telling Audacity by highlighting this and uh, going to effect noise reduction, telling it. I click and get nose profile that this is what I want to get rid of. You have to look through this throughout this whole audio and get rid of any of that. So what now you do is go control A to select everything. Actually, wait, no. For you, it would be control A, but because I'm doing uh, one here and I'm not, I'm leaving this one alone, I won't do that. But select the areas that you want to get rid of it on. Basically, control A uh, and go to noise reduction again and use these settings. So it's 24 on noise reduction or decibels. Uh, sensitivity is 1.50 and frequency smoothing band is 150 I don't know what these do but I played around with it and these turned out to be the best settings for me it worked make sure you click reduce not residue and click OK now it'll do its job it'll work it out and let's hear what it sounds like 
Did you hear that? Completely silent. I think this area best demonstrates it as well. The only sound you're hearing there is my tongue. <laughs> but let's undo, all right? Now look at this, all right? I'm going to highlight here. You can see that, right? That green, that green thing shown. Okay, now I'm going to redo it. All right, let's go exactly back to the same spot. And I want you to look here. It's completely reduced it. It hasn't extinguished it. Maybe there's some other sound like the chair or something making a noise. So that's completely gotten rid of it. And that's exactly what you want. It makes it sound much more clear and much more crisp. And if you put like music or something in the background, it would just fit much more nicely. One, two, three, four. Peanut butter is best served fresh. Now you have to be careful when doing this because if the noise is so much, let's say you've got a car going by. I think I talked about this in my last audio style video. If you've got something like a car going by or something that's actually pretty loud and matches the volume or you can see you can see the audio wave of that sound. So for example, let's say a car, a car drives past and you can see a wave. Getting rid of that might might actually impact your general audio. Because what you're doing is you're it to get rid of that, which is a massive part of this audio. And if a car drives past whilst just speaking, say, so let's say here, another car drives past around this area, it it's still got to try and get rid of it. So it's going to completely remove some of your voice trying to get rid of that thing that you wanted it to get rid of, if you know what I mean. And your voice will be warped and a bit distorted because it can't get rid of that car noise without removing some of your voice because the frequency levels are quite similar on some ends. So it has to do that and it will heavily impact it. So if you have something like a car going past or a plane going by, try not to select that area to get rid of it. You're just going to have to accept that a plane went by and you can't do much about it. Okay, so now that is done. I think there's one more thing I need to do. You need to compress it. Now, uh, compressing basically... Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. <laughs> anyway, you need to make sure... It's, it's like an equalizer in a sense. It just makes it sound nice and better. really compresses it down. And it just finishes the job, if you know what I mean. So you compress it, and as you can see, it's made it all louder, which would be very bad, because as you see, it's peaking at one decibel, which uh, is around here. Where my mouse is, it's beyond that of what this uh, is. Here's zero. That's the zero decibel. Here's one, and it's already hitting one, so it's peaking. Or if not peaking, it's already really, really loud. So I'll demonstrate that. If you have high headphones, high, high headphones... If you had your headphones turned up, please turn it down as I demonstrate this. It's going to hurt my ears probably. One, two, three, four. So look here. It's almost peaking. It probably will peak over here. Peanut butter is best served fresh. And it, it's best that you keep it at least below six. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to de-amplify it now, which I'll show you. Uh, so for the other one, by the way, I, did, I don't know if I've got to say. The settings actually, compressing. Dynamic range compressor. Decibel, uh, the threshold is minus 18. I think the rest you just keep the same, click OK, and it will do that for you. So I forgot to say that. Sorry about that. A bit ahead of myself. <laughs> anyway, so we need to do, we need to go amplify. The first one you'll see on the effects. And just de-amplify it as much as you want. There's no specific number here. Uh, I'm going to do 10. Or is that a bit too low? That's a bit too low. Amplify it to a level where it starts to go about below 6. So it's picking up 1. So if I do that, one, two, three, four. So as you can see here, six is where you want to be. Peanut butter is best served fresh. Okay, so that is a pretty nice uh, volume. So it won't peak and it will sound pretty, pretty strong, pretty powerful and loud enough. So that's quite nice. So uh, I think I have a feeling. Hang on. Am I forgetting anything? No, I've compressed. I've equalized. I've done a noise reduction. And I think that is it. You've now got your perfect audio post-produced and you're now comparing it to this. So let's play this. One, two, three, four. Peanut butter is best served fresh. Now this one. One, two, three, four. Peanut butter is best served fresh. So I hope you can uh, see the difference there in... Uh, in audio sound and how post-production and everything really impacts your video and makes it sound so much better it really makes it so much better it makes it look much more professional and it really really helps 
So I hope you guys did enjoy this. Let me show you again the difference. Peanut butter is best served fresh. Peanut butter is best served fresh. See, the second one is much more crisp, louder, and just sounds 10 times better. So I hope this helped you guys. I know it was a long tutorial. If you did stay by, thank you. I love you very much for sticking through that. You are a warrior because even I was like, God, I'm dragging on. <laughs> I talk too much. And I really take too long to get my point across. Anyway, this has been FWTV HD. I hope this helped you guys out and kind of showed you the importance of audio is pretty much as important as video. If you've got bad audio and great video, people will still not like it and think it's a bit unprofessional. So I hope this taught you something, uh, something about post editing, anything I've mentioned like Audacity, my microphones that I've told you about or anything like that, they will be in the description. Audacity is free, so you don't need to worry about that. Everything I'm using now is free, easy to get, and it doesn't take too much of your computer's power or ability to use this software. So, uh, to thank you guys for watching, you're the real MVP. Don't let anyone else tell you otherwise, and peace.